Welcome everyone, Simon3D here. Today we are gonna make this uh, burning star slash energy ball slash magic item in-game effect uh, kind of thingy in Blender. It's, as you can see, it's uh, three-dimensional this time, so it has some volume to it. And it's fully procedural, so a lot about it can be adjusted. And the core of it is not actually that complicated, it's just a simple shader and a particle effect. So let's see how it's done. Let's open a new Blender scene and let's start with a cylinder. Let's give it a little bit less geometry than 32, maybe something like 8. This will be our uh, singular energy or fire effect, our single particle that later we will spawn from our source. So it doesn't have to have as many vertices. Now let's go to the edit mode, delete the caps on the top and the bottom, just simple click X, delete faces, and still in edit mode let's select everything, move it on the Z axis so that the bottom is actually on the grid, like so. Now let's go to vertices mode and drag those up a little bit to make it taller. Something like this, later you can adjust that to your liking. Let's also shade it smooth, move it aside and jump straight into the shading tab where we will create our material. Now as in previous videos, let's go here and turn down the world opacity so that we can see our effect better. Now click new, create a new material, give it a proper name and delete the principled BSDF shader as we will not need it. Now add what I add in literally every single video on this channel, which is the setup with emission shader, trans, not translucent, transparent BSDF and a mix shader to connect them together. Now the energy itself is gonna be made with a noise texture. Again, you should probably already have a node wrangler enabled, so simply click Ctrl T and get the mapping node and the texture coordinates. If you don't have it, then you can simply search for it. It's a mapping node and texture coordinate. Connect the object to vector and then the mapping node to the noise texture. It's the exact same thing, but node wrangler makes it just way more convenient. So now we can preview our noise texture already. Control shift left mouse button if you have the node wrangler enabled. And we can see something already happening in here. Now let's bring down the scale in the noise texture to make this pattern a little bit bigger. And also we want it to be vertical. So in order to do that we will need to manipulate the scale on the bottom of our mapping node. So for that we will need a value node, a math node, and a combine XYZ node. Now in the value node we can just put in 1, then the math node let's change it to divide and connect it with our value node, and connect the output from divide to the Z, and the X and Y is gonna be our base value. Now if we connect the output of combine XYZ to the scale and we play around with this value in divide, you can see that we can extend, basically stretch the texture to make it look more like a flame. So something like 6.5 maybe should be all right, we will see soon. Now after the noise texture, let's just add a color ramp and change the interpolation from linear to beast line. Usually I'm using constant, but for this effect, I found out that harsh edges are not as nice. That's why we're using the beast line. Now let's change the color of our flame to something more flamey, so like orange and drag in this black value somewhere about here so that we have a little bit of contrast and that is basically the effect for our flame. 
You can also play with the parameters in the noise texture, such as the distortion or the detail and roughness, but I will leave it uh, something like this. If you want, you can spend way more time here tweaking those and polishing the effect. Now, one more thing that we need to do is we need to add a layer weight node because what we want is we only want the flame to be visible in the middle of our mesh and not so much on the edge so that we don't get this harsh uh, cutout. So in order to do that, let's get the facing value. As you can see, it creates a nice gradient from the middle to the edges but right now it's black in the middle and white on the outside and that's not exactly what we need so let's add a invert node and put it right after the layer weight now the gradient is brighter in the middle and gets darker on the outsides you can't see it that well but we can easily refine it with one more math node set to power and now by manipulating this exponent we can get this gradient to be bigger or smaller I like something like this maybe so that the black areas are only on the very edges of the mesh that we can see so something like 3 maybe 5 so now that we have our mask we have to multiply that by the flame itself. So for that we will use another math node, this time set to multiply and simply connect this power and also the color ramp together and the result of our multiply we can directly connect to the factor of the mix shader and the color ramp result let's also connect to the emission. And now when we preview mix shader you can see that nothing really changed and that is because in material properties, make sure that the blend mode is set to alpha blend and shadow mode to none. As you can see, the flame is there, but it's very, very uh, weak, I would say. It's not very visible, but we can easily fix that with the emission strength. Simply put in a much bigger number, something like 100 maybe, or maybe a bit less, 50. And as you can see, we have a nice flamey looking uh, stick, I would say. So now this is not the end of our shader graph, but in order to visualize better what we will do next, let's move on to creating the particle system for our effect. So let's go back to our layout, switch the view to rendered so that we can see our flame already and create new mesh, which is going to be the source for our particles. I prefer UV sphere because that is the shape of the effect I'm going for, but feel free to experiment with another shapes. Now with the sphere selected, let's go into the particle system tab, click this plus button to create new, and go down into the render tab and render us change from halo to object, and the object you can choose the fire pillar that we just created that single particle now as you can see it appeared here but it's very small so let's bring up the scale to one this is gonna be the maximum size of the particle spawn and we can also bring the scale randomness to something like 0.25 just so that not every particle is gonna be the same size if you if you click play you can already see the particle spawning and even though it gives off some effect, that's not what we're going for. So we will need to adjust a few more settings in order to achieve the desired result. So first of all, let's go to the physics tab and change the physics type from Newtonian to Boyd's. Next, let's change the mass to something like 15 kilograms. And now, depending on which axis you created uh, the cylinder, you may have to rotate it by 90 degree to make it parallel to the grid. So in my case, I have to rotate it on the y-axis by 90 degree, and that distributes the particles in this spherical shape. All right, now that we already have the base of our particle system, we can pause the animation somewhere in the middle, just so that we have a lot of those particles spawned and we can select our single particle and jump back into the shading tab to improve the look of our energy ball. Because as you can see, 
for now the outer edges of the flame is very sharp and when it disappears it looks not so great I would say but there is an easy fix for that. So first of all we will need a gradient texture node and now again Control T to get mapping and texture coordinates. Make sure that it's object that is connected to mapping node and let's also add a value node that will be connected to scale. We want the scale to be uniform so we don't need to bother with the connect XYZ again. Let's move it a little bit higher, change the gradient texture from linear to spherical and let's preview that. As you can see the mask of the spherical gradient texture is in a ball shape that's coming from the middle and what we need to do is we need to extend it just so that it barely touches the tip and instead of this harsh line we will have a soft gradient where our flame will disappear. So in order to do that we will need a math node set to power again and now first let's play with the value that goes into the scale, let's bring it down, maybe not so much, something like 0.1 I discovered works quite nicely, that will give us the main area where the flame will be visible and now with the power exponent we can control the softness of the gradient. So something like maybe 2.5, maybe 3 is okay. Now let's bring this value a little bit lower, maybe a bit too low, something like 0 0.09. And now we have to multiply this mask with the mask that we already have. So in order to do that we will need another multiply node, let's connect that together like so move those a little bit further to give some space and now the result of our last multiply node let's connect to the factor of the main shader and now if we preview that you can see that the star already has this nice soft gradient that's disappearing as it moves off from the center and that actually completes our shader now what we can do to improve the look of it is to give it some uh, movement to animate some values or give it some variety. So let's start by playing with the mapping node of our noise texture. We can animate the location Z using the drivers. So simply type in hashtag frame divided by let's say 60. And now if you bring up the timeline and click play, you should see the effect the noise texture moving and when it's moving inside and you want to change the direction simply go back to the driver and before frame type in minus to change the direction of which the, the flames are flowing. Now another thing as you can see all these effects all those particles have basically the same noise seed and for some it may be desirable for some it may not. In order to change the seed on every single particle in this effect we will need a object info node, a math node set to add, and another value node. Now simply connect random and value to this math node and add another driver to this value node. This will make the seed change over time as the animation progresses. So again, frame divided by let's say 250 Let's make it change value quite slow so that the animation doesn't jump too much but it will just be very very soft effect. And now the result of this add we will connect to our noise texture but before that we need to change the mode from 3D to 4D which will give us this W which is the seed of our noise so simply connect the add to the W value. Now as you can see all the noises of the singular uh, particles are adjusted and if you press play you can see that there is much more varieties in the pattern of singular particles. We also can play with the colors in this graph to give the effect a little bit different look. Maybe I'll go with this yellowish uh, green thing this time and that is it for the, for the shader graph. The next step will be adjusting the particle system itself to make sure that we don't have those ugly 
disappearing of the particles in such an abrupt way. We want this to be way uh, more smooth and organic. So let's pause it and if you've watched my previous tutorial then you probably know what we're gonna do right now. We will first of all increase the number of the particles to something like maybe 2500 to make it more dense. The frame start we will put to something like minus 100 so that at the very beginning the particles will be already spawned. I'll put the lifetime of the particles to 100 as well and the end frame where the particles will be spawning will be set to, in my case it's gonna be 250, but it's whatever your animation length it is, just to ensure that during the course of the whole animation we always have uh, the particles spawning. And now to get rid of those popping effects, we'll scroll down until we see the texture tab. Here we'll simply click new to create new texture, name it as you wish, and go to the textures tab to create a blend texture. Now this texture is gonna drive the scale of our particles, so open the influence tab, uncheck the general time and check only size. Now scroll a bit further, in mapping coordinates change from generated to strand slash particle, and then open colors, check in color ramp, open color ramp, set the alpha to one so that we can see what we're doing and make a simple black white black gradient so that at the beginning of our particle life they will be super small then they will grow to their full size and then they will fade away to super small again we can preview how that looks like as you can see it's much much more gradual much more um, organic looking right now if you want this effect to be faster or slower, you can add more nodes to this a color ramp. Simply drag it in so that they appear much faster and then they go down much faster as well. It all depends on what kind of effect you're going for. I will leave it as the default, so just put it somewhere in the middle. Maybe create one more here. Just like that. And that, my dear viewers, is the effect. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something along the way. If you happen to find some application for this effect in your scene or in your artwork, please tag me on social media. I would really love to see that, your creative vision, what did you do with it. You can find the links to it uh, on in the description. And as always, I will provide the scene that you've seen at the very beginning of the video on my Gumroad for free. So feel free to check that out as well, link in the description again. And that will be it for this video. I will see you in the next one. If you have any suggestions or if you'd like to see some particular effect done next, then you can leave the comment in the description and I'll take a look at it. So enjoy and see you in the next one.